G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is the PBW Chinese Assault Rifle mod. I originally looked at this mod a few weeks back when it was in Alpha. It's come to full release since then, actually a few weeks ago. I'm a little late to the party on this one, but life sort of got in the way and work and everything. I hope you forgive me, but we're going to look at this thing again in its 1.0 or possibly even later form because, well, you've probably seen what mod version we're using, but the full release offers us a few more options. We've got a Chinese Covert Carbine, which has an integral suppressor, a little bit of AS value about this i don't mind it there's also a few unique versions sprinkled throughout the map i'll show you how to get those and we'll use them to shoot enemies we'll quickly go over the chinese assault rifle we'll tune this up to what i think to be its optimal form so we'll throw this with the advanced receiver giving us 93 damage which is okay we can throw on a longer barrel to increase our range it helps us do damage over range and that's accuracy over range our furniture will scroll down all the way to support furniture which gives you a pretty uh, similar looking handguard, but it gives you a full wooden stock and it'll offer you better accuracy and better recoil control, which is nice. A coffin quick magazine here will allow us for maximum ammo capacity and a faster, slightly faster reload compared to the standard coffin magazine. And for the sights, you can have a reflex sight on this thing. Um, there's a couple of options for reflex sights. I'm going to go with that one because it seems to be the less constricting of the player's view, although this one's perhaps a little bit more open but there's a lot more metal there that we're looking at if we compare it to this particular reflex set there's also versions of scopes on this thing if you want to use this thing as more of like a sniper type weapon complete with well, I mean, it looks like a uh, Nuka World scope, but there's no, like, weird AK mounts that you'd find on the handmade rifle, so that's interesting. We'll throw a suppressor on this thing. Gives you a nice, big old-looking PBS suppressor. I remember those from Battlefield 4. But they, they go all right. We get a little bit extra damage from um, Ace Operator there, so we can't say anything bad about that, apart from the range being lessened. But that's just what happens when you throw on suppressors in this game. And we can make this uh, fire the 7.62 rounds from Nuka World, to allow us to do a little bit more damage than usual. Does that decrease the ammo capacity? Probably not. You could stuff the same amount of 7.62s in this magazine as 5.56s. And also, you can change the textures on this. Standard finish is great. You've also got this obvious commie one. So, if you wanted to be outed as a commie spy, I think you'd be walking around with this paint on your weapon. There's also a callback to Fallout New Vegas' Gobi sniper rifle with a desert sort of paint on this version. And there's also the Purge, which looks really cool, and I still don't know what the Purge is, but don't you worry. I will we'll protect you from the Purge. The angels were vigilant. And I think that is it for the Chinese Assault Rifle. Moving on to the Carbine, you'll find that the receivers are much the same. This thing, as standard, firing the 9mm rounds, so even more like the ASVL, that's like 9 by I believe 28. They're like tiny little rifle bullets but they pack a lot of punch for what they are we'll go for the infantry furniture for the uh, superior recoil on this thing just to reel that in and we'll go for another coffin click magazine to allow for good ammo capacity sights there's a lot of uh, options here you'll find that they're pretty similar to that you'd find on a standard looking thing and we're gonna go for more of a let's say What's the sniper called? It's a VT Ventores VSS. Yeah, we'll go for a more VSS, but it's going to be automatic anyway. And for some reason, without the standard iron sights, that whole... I think that's... Is that a gas block or whatever that is? Uh, for some reason, the capping there gets removed. I don't even think capping is the right name, but I'm a roofer by trade. Um, so we'll move on. So you can you can throw in some 40 caliber rounds in this thing. This is a weapon or a proprietary ammo type offered by... Munitions. If you don't have munitions installed, this will just be nothing. And 32 caliber is another one, just the same. But this will give you a lot more damage. So we'll throw that one on. And again, you can change the finish on this one. Let's go for a Gobi Desert finish on it. Yes, that's nice. And there's probably a couple of other uniques out there. They probably won't all have suppressors. So we'll go loud and proud for those ones, should they not be installed with a suppressor by default, but I'll show you where to get them. All right, our first unique we'll find just inside of Salgus Ironworks. Here is the map reference for it. You've got Kingsport Lighthouse over here, Sanctuaries over there for reference, so a little bit of a long walk, but this one relatively easy to get should you be able to get past the guards that are sitting here. Who's that guy? He didn't last very long against the power of the Chinese assault rifle. Now, did he? Now, they'll run at you with flamethrowers, and sometimes they'll carry uh, molotovs like you just witnessed then. But 
they're, they're small fish, these guys. I mean, flamethrowers, they're just a stiff breeze in this game. And you'll find Zurong's breath. Here it is. Take that. As you can tell, a little bit of a dragon sort of mouth here and powered by flamer fuel. So it's like a little flamethrower Chinese assault rifle thing. Cool. The next unique we'll find is embedded within the Yangtze. That's just the uh, Chinese spy submarine that's just sitting in Boston Harbor. So you want to just go through the front door, open this bulkhead up, open fire on the communists, and then go this way down to your left. You'll find this room. What you want to do is go to your right and then find this sort of middle door on this deck. Go through here, take another right, and on this desk you'll find the Type Ray Energy Carbine. There it is. It's uh, firing on just standard fusion cells by the looks, but that's what it looks like. There's also a type rate energy launcher on the floor here. It uh, fires the EC packs. That's another munitions thing. And it looks like it does a whole lot of damage, So, and it lobs a projectile. So we'll have to see how that one goes. But yeah, so just as a reminder, if you are using the munitions thing, which you'll require to actually have whilst using this mod, You'll need to find the ammos on the 11 list, so if you're on PC, you can just console command them to you, but, you know, you'll, you might have to grind them out a little bit to actually find the ammunition for it, so there you go. Oh, here's something cute, too. If you're wondering about the Purge, uh, Captain Zhao has uh, wrote a journal about it in English, despite being Chinese. He goes, I was approached by some strange individuals today. They had various pieces of armor on, some I recognized from my time in the war, some I had never seen before in my life. They all had one thing in common, though. They are all painted to look black with golden smears all over. I swear I saw the Brotherhood of Steel symbols, bit it, man, too, countless symbols. It felt almost cult-like. They had the paint scheme on their weapons, too. One of them had a weapon from my homeland. That's the one we stole from them. We, we found the Purge, and we stole the guns from them. They got the paint on it. They explained to me that I was acquainted with destruction, and they knew exactly what the submarine was made for, and why they could use me. I refused. I'm a change man, and they just walked off without saying anything. Of course, after they looked at me for a moment just to rub in the intimidation. The unsettling part is what they've called themselves, the Purge. Oh, nah, just Mass Effect Reapers. Don't worry, we'll build a super weapon and we'll wipe the galaxy in blue, green, or red and we'll uh, go home for lunch. Uh, don't mind that sound, that's just the breeze of the game and not my computer's fans roaring in the Australian summer heat. Anyways, here is our Chinese assault rifle, all purge colored in first person. You, you've seen it just before, but hang on, I've annoyed something over here. I'm going to open fire on that behemoth. I'm going to drop him all the way back here. Well, if we don't kill him with bullets, I think a uh, communist brought on famine might finish the job. Here's the uh, Chinese carbine in Gobi Paint in third person. It lines up mostly, nothing really to complain about there. And we go over to our energy versions of this one. This is just the, uh... oh, it shoots little alien bolt laser beams. Look how slow those projectiles are going. If we're shooting at moving targets, we've got a lead. So, you know, next Tuesday, they might actually hit the target we're actually shooting at. Here is our lobbed version, appears to be a little bit like the, uh, what do you call it, that... Oh, it's got a reflex sight too, that's helpful. Um, it's like the, a little bit of... I mean, electron charge packs, you'd expect that kind of explosion. A little bit of Tesla rifle in there, I don't mind that. A little bit of, uh, what's it called, that Nuka World, um... Nuka Quantum launcher thing, a little bit of that going on without the, uh, mushroom cloud. We're not really hitting close to that super moon beam, it doesn't look like we're doing... A whole lot of damage and lastly we've got the version here which is not particularly loaded well but it's got the flamethrower it's kind of cool right hey I cooked his face pretty fast awesome okay this flamethrower one might actually be badass we'll, we'll check out how this one goes obviously the range on this thing uh, we're getting run away from don't you think you're going anywhere mate that's it you're getting a critical cop that all right now we're good. We're down to critical. We haven't shot at any gunners yet, but I think you get the idea of what we are dealing with. And uh, I think we'll start off by just utilizing the scopes version here, just so we can see our enemies a little bit easier. And a little bit of Battlefield 3 ASVL micro bursting, despite there not being any 
there's not a lot of uh, range on this thing in compared to you know, a longer barreled rifle version. I just got a sniper knockdown for an automatic weapon and another. Okay. It appears that my Chinese carbine is not holding its damage very well over range. We might have to wait until they get a little bit closer. But the rate of fire on this thing, it's pretty supreme. I think we are using pistol caliber though, so we can't expect the world out of this thing. Can we? The sniper knocked down an automatic weapon. Whether that's intentional or not, I'm not sure, but I'm uh, quite thankful to have it. And now, we are being surrounded by like 50 zillion gunners. So we'll just uh, throw some criticals in the mix here, just to get a little bit of uh, damage done here because despite all of its uh, extra power you get out of the 762 round that rate of fire definitely doesn't help I swear it was stronger the last time I used it but maybe they've uh, redone the balancing a little bit to make it a little bit less uh, appealing to use than the uh, standard big fat assault rifle that you'd find in the game I'll say, though, that it is a fairly accurate weapon, and yeah, the animation does make it look like the weapon's kicking around a lot more, but you'll find that it is uh, a fairly stable platform to be firing on, which is nice. It's a, it's a, it's a well, it's a weapon that feels pretty good to utilize. All right, let's use the uh, flamethrower variant here. We'll freshen the magazine, and we'll let it rip. Oh yeah, that's the way to go. This is way cooler than anything else. Ooh, technically, it's not cooler, but... You get the idea. And we'll do a cheap little reload here using that, and we'll continue. With a weapon like this, it's a little bit like a plasma flamer of what you'd find uh, people flogging. I don't know if they still flog those in Fallout 76. I haven't played it in a very long time myself. But the same sort of idea. And now I've got Nerd Rage active. We'll just go and cook their faces in slow motion. And wait for that reload. There it is explode his face through sheer <laughs> firepower as it were and we even get a little bit of our health back um thanks to that nerd rage streak so we might be able to pop back into nerd rage we won't get all of the bonuses from it but we'll go back in this slow motion at least i think we can cook multiple gunners at once so we've got crowd control covered i think and i think we crippled that guy's leg from shooting him in the chest with a with a flamethrower who would have thought the most effective variant that I'd be finding here would be the version with uh, with the flamethrower? But that's done pretty well so far. We've got a full uh, health regen thanks to um, our level up, so that's pretty good. Cheeky little knockdown there. It's uh, not doing the job in terms of damage. You might want to go close range and just like hip fire someone, just shred them in close quarters like that. That might be the way to go with this thing. A scope, I think, was a mistake on this thing. Apart from the cheap sniper knockdowns, which there seem to be plenty of. Bit of bullet sponging going on at the moment. Maybe I don't use the lob one at close range. Never mind, I just did. Ow, that actually hurt quite a lot. And then the game crashed. Okay, that's okay. We'll try things a little bit differently this time. We'll start off with the lobbing barrel and see if we can nail a few... That's headshots. We'll even throw a critical in there just to really send it home. Eh, it's alright, I suppose. It's no, like, 40mm thumper grenade launcher tier damage, but what can you do, eh? I'm going to keep sending in these grenades. Perhaps if I was shooting at robots, the electromagnetic pulse effect that we're seeing. Wow, really? Couldn't have timed that worse myself. Anyways, we'll keep on firing there. We've got, um concentrated fire to reel in that accuracy and a little bit of damage over time definitely helps it is like a perfect fusion between uh what do you call it a tesla cannon and a chinese assault rifle it's a fusion and a combination that i honestly didn't expect to see out of this weapon mod but it's something different and i appreciate that we're like firing mortars at our enemies completely behind the safety of cover here. We just continue firing and the only reason we're getting 20% accuracy to start off with is because McCready. I think I just got a critical from that. I did. We're like loading those criticals out to the uh, bullet velocity of this uh, particular launcher. 
Well, that did okay, I suppose. Nothing to complain about there. I did a little bit better than expected. Now, can I... I'd like to bring out the laser one, please. There we go. 75 energy damage. I... I've got the fix. The energy damage fix. So maybe, just maybe, we'll be okay. I tell you what, by the time I've fired this thing, I've had the time to play 18 rounds of golf before the projectiles hit the target. And man, oh man. I gotta say, this is probably the worst part about this mod. It's just how slow it is. But perhaps it's a gimmick weapon and a little bit of funny ha-has, but no. Yes for stationary targets, but no for literally anything else. Perhaps suppressing fire, seeing there is uh, slow projectiles might psych an enemy out. I suppose the only way you could probably use this is to just flog it in vats, which appears to be an effective tactic because you get a hell of a lot of shots. And that's auto automatic, so it's a three round burst. Perhaps we might find use for it in as a vats only because even in bullet time, that's not going to let the projectiles immediately go onto your enemies. It looks like, yeah, vats is the way to go with this thing. That might be the only way. Excuse me. Fuck off, Mantis. Mantis has given their opinions when they're unwanted everywhere. Alright. We'll just start and stuck duck under that grenade and uh, move on to the next dude, who is this one. That crits do alright, but it takes a little bit of killing. I suppose if you want your criticals back, a full AP bar will give you almost a full run. And we didn't get too many um, the Four Leaf Clover procs there either, which I think is pretty nice. Alright. Let's go back over to our standard Chinese Assault Rifle. Just for a little bit of, I suppose, um, clarity. So we can uh, give it a fair shake. Fair shake of the sauce bottle, mate. Now, one of our Prime Ministers said that and everyone thought it was tacky. Because it's like a proper old Australian saying. He said it and everyone thought it was tacky and it is. He ruined it for everyone else. But, uh, what... I'm seeing here, what I'm feeling here is that all of them are... There's pros and cons to each. For consistency, I do think that the standard Assault Rifle Reflex Sight Advanced Receiver Suppressor is probably going to be your most consistent setup because you don't have to worry about nonsense like bullet travel time or lengthy reloads or just crazy over-the-top recoil. Perhaps if I was using this thing with true damage, it'd be crushing everything, but... You know, we wouldn't want to make things too easy now, would we? Let's go back over to the covert carbine, as it were. Perhaps a little up chamber would be better. 45 ACPs might do us pretty well there, because that's a full magazine. Granted, I missed maybe uh, 10 to 15 shots in that, just from the crazy recoil. Perhaps it's punching a little bit above its weight in terms of... Uh, its capabilities here at Gunners Plaza and keep in mind that we are fighting a, a bunch of uh, Gunners that you wouldn't normally see in any vanilla game unless you use that um, Wasteland Workshop mod to trap a shitload of Gunners and fight them like this but now this is definitely I suppose when we consider the fact that it is doing a little bit more than what we could ask of it of vanilla game circumstances it's putting up an admirable fight but I do feel that it is a little bit on the uh, sort of mid-level gameplay sort of um, spectrum of damage and output and stuff. But that is not to say it is not an extremely well-made weapon. The numbers here are just a little bit short of making yes. it a powerhouse endgame sort of weapon. Gee, they're loving the flashbangs here today. None of them have hit yet, which is lucky because, you know, that's a nasty sort of thing, experience. Actually, I wouldn't know. Is it? I've never been flashbanged before. I'd imagine that it'd leave behind some permanent damage that it, at least, if not permanent, it'd take a few months to recover from because you, know, you get blinded. Who, like, that can't be good for you, right? Anyways, we'll chop that guy down. Oh, that was weird. Was I not getting the 4.4 times sneak criticals? No, it's 3.9. 
The suppressor keyword is not right. Okay, well now that we know that, we're not at this weapon's full potential. It is unfortunate, but it is what it is. But there's room to grow, I suppose. I wonder if it's factoring in the suppressor for the purposes of Ace Operator. Maybe. Who knows? Anyways, we'll uh, try to generate as many criticals of this guy's face as we possibly can. We've got five criticals going for us for bullet time bats, which I don't think we've even used yet. So that's pretty helpful. We might want to use that just a little bit. And did I not... No, okay, I didn't. The lighting's a little bit weird there. Sometimes, uh, yeah, like I said before, I think I spoke about this before, but... When I'm doing the initial preview of the weapon and I'm changing attachments, I have to turn the SSAO off and it just makes the whole lighting worse. That's doing most of the heavy lifting for this AMB to make everything look really good. But I have to turn that off, otherwise the weapons go invisible and that's not cool. Alrighty, I suppose we'll go for one quick monster fight with our specialized stealthy Chinese carbine. First of all, we've got to take out the suicide, which I think I've knocked it down and was eventually able to find his uh, bomb there to set that off, but we'll use a little bit of our bullet time, I think. Complete waste of criticals, you might say. I am inclined to agree. But we're getting at least a little bit of snake criticals, and if he comes a little bit closer, maybe we should creep a little bit closer as we're going there. Actually, he's being attacked by a, a random ghoul now, I think. Hey, that's not cool, ghoul. You're stopping me from getting sneak criticals. You're also hiding in its hitbox, so I can't... That's it. You're, you're, you're finished, mate. I'm tired of your nonsense. Wait, did I get it? Is it dead? Or just go out of range? No, it's still there. Waste of a critical, but, you know, I've already wasted a few at this stage, so... Alright, now we can sort of whittle him down a little bit further. Uh, it's pretty quick just to do this, to be honest. Alright, now he's coming a little bit closer. We'll open fire. Lots of VATS usage for this thing. And now, I think we're in combat. He's definitely seeing me at this point, right? Right? Oh, yeah. We are, it is on. It is officially on. And I think... Crazy as this plan might be, we might be uh, looking to uh, turn up the heat on him. Let's try this out. It is working a little bit. How does this thing work in VATS? Because normally the flamethrower, the flamer in VATS is just terrible. It's weird because you do the three round burst and you really think you'd, you'd ought to do the uh, ten round burst. So it's not like you're just lightly tapping on the trigger. All of the flame spitting directly at the bottom of the barrel. Okay, that was an unnecessary roll, but I'll take it. That was just me just fumbling around with the buttons, of course. But we could do this. Why not? Now, I'll be honest, I'm not learned enough on Fallout 4 Flamers to know exactly what flame projectile that's going. But I want to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a bet on here and say that's the same as the uh, vapor nozzle that the last one that does the most damage and is frequently broken in Fallout 76. Every time you log in in Fallout 76, you gotta change over your flame barrels to make it actually work again. I'm sure that's still a bug that happens, right? Maybe I'm talking out of my ass. I've been out of the loop for a very long time, but I will say that despite being a terrible plan for doing damage against the swan, the flamethrower is doing a pretty good job, and we don't usually use... Wow, I think we just burnt ourselves there. Something was stopping us. Oh, you know what that is? I reckon we hit... I reckon we hit that um, boulder. Rise is about to come in, so the flames are cast off a nothing wall. So that's why it's happening. That's normal. That's what happens in real life. We'll add some criticals into the mix here. That's done okay, I suppose. The mysterious stranger has shown up. He's got one shot in before he got brutally curb stomped. So there's that. And that is us on uh, Nerd Rage. We can't remove that projectile. But now it's do or die time. If we can't finish the job now, it's now or never. Okay, Vats it is. I'm relying on these criticals, Vats. 
Wow, that was close. How many HP did I have left? 15. It doesn't get closer than that. Oh, look, you now he's a toasty corpse. That's cool. Also, I like the fact that we're still... We're still pulling that charging handle back despite it being presumably like pressurized gas in there and wouldn't have to be cycled like a... Ah, uh, it's nitpicky, but I think that's kind of amusing. Alrighty, so I think you get the idea. I've looked at this weapon before and the performance, I think, is good enough for a balanced approach to this game. But I must say, personally, just uh, personally, it might be different for anyone watching the video, that I just like a little bit more power out of this thing. Because, you know, using this thing as an endgame level, I, I understand there was never an endgame assault rifle or weapon in Fallout 3, but giving a little bit of endgame viability would be nice. Perhaps a damage slider there, I, if I missed that. I may have missed that on the thing already, but... Sorry, it's been a long week. It's only... Uh, it's only a few days to go into the end of the year until I'm in holidays, and my, I might start... My brain might start working then, so isn't that nice? So, if you're interested in this weapon, check out link in the description. I recommend anything done by the um, Project Bygone Weapons crew. There's a little, for the nostalgia alone, I think it's awesome, but they they managed to recreate the weapons in such a way that it feels like that they're just meant to be in Fallout 4 to begin with. So, can't recommend them enough. Check out the mod. Link in the description if you are interested in seeing that one. Need a companion coming soon. I might work on her during the holiday time when I'm not so bloody busy from work. Thank you very much for watching, guys.